Hello everybody, it's been a minute since we did a video like this. Marvel Entertainment Chairman Ike Perlmutter cut from company. You're fired! Along with fellow executive Victoria Alonzo, Ike Perlmutter is out at Marvel. And this is kind of a big deal because Perlmutter, a couple of years ago, his duties were scaled back. And Ike was kind of somebody that you could tell they were trying to get rid of and replace with somebody more diverse. And I'm not siding with Ike Perlmutter uh, on anything. But, I mean, let's be honest. This guy is an old white guy. We want to get rid of him and get somebody more diverse and who's up with the scene in his position. Well, he's gone. Uh, Disney's got to cut seven, was it 7,000 jobs? So his was one that they were probably overpaying. So they asked him. Let's get into this article. This from Deadline.com came out this morning. A Disney spokesperson has confirmed to Deadline that Ike Perlmutter is out at the company. Note, Perlmutter oversaw consumer products division of Marvel and isn't part of the Kevin Feige-led Marvel Studios. Perlmutter's departure comes amid Disney cutting 7,000 jobs in a massive overhaul of its employee core that's part of a $5.5 billion cost-cutting maneuver to position the Mouse House even more for the streaming-obsessed entertainment era. Perlmutter's Marvel Entertainment will be folded into other parts of the Disney corporate umbrella. Perlmutter's oversight included comic book publishing, which reportedly earns 40 to $60 million annually, as well as its game licensing and arena shows. Part of the problem with Perlmutter was he was against all the diversity stuff, and I believe it was him years ago that said nobody would go see a superhero movie led by a female, which... He's out of line, but he's right. I mean, given the time in which he said that, which, I mean, there was little to no successful uh, female-led superhero movies in, in this genre, in the comic book genre. Now, not that there hasn't been successful female-led action movies, which there have been, and they've been done extremely well. I'm talking your Aliens, uh, Terminator 2, um, any movie with Cynthia Rothrock from the 80s, okay? Um, Mimi Lesios, you know, there's a litany, uh, Atomic Blonde, I mean, you can go on and on, and I was talking to somebody last night about Peppermint, I was actually a friend of mine who stopped over, we were talking about Peppermint, because we, we always, he's interested in what I do, and my perspective on movies being as I, how I cover them regularly, and, you know, we were talking about that, and he asked me if I'd ever seen Peppermint, and I said no, and he said, well, and he's kind of a normie. And it was funny hearing him say, it's a good action movie that doesn't come across as like she's some kind of like unstoppable girl. And it's like, okay. You know, he's like, she trained for it. It's, a re it's like a female revenge kind of movie, which we know the male, you know, revenge fantasy movie that happens all the time. So good on Jennifer Garner. Um, Jennifer Garner has the chops to play action. She certainly has the physique for it. Um, you know, Electra was not a great movie, but we can, you know, move forward and say, you know, Peppermint was. I'm, I want to see, I know it came out a while ago. I have not seen this movie. It's one that I want to see. And to bring this back to Marvel. Well, we're waiting. Marvel really dropped the ball, not giving Black Widow a movie. And I know, guys, I, I, it sounds like we beat this drum. The whole Brie Larson thing, I mean, it was just such a... Is that like a personal attack or something? Or? It, it was such a disservice to the character of Black Widow. We've been around since like 1962, 61. 1864. We're talking, what, uh, 60 plus years. The numbers don't lie! And they're like, oh, well, let's give this, this female character a movie first. Did Captain Marvel make a... Make a billion dollars. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him. Man, shut your anorexic malnutrition tape where I'm having overdose Dick Gregory Bahamian diet drinking ass up. <laughs> Open to interpretation on how much money that movie actually made after the subterfuge and sleight of hand by Disney and their corporate cronies. That notwithstanding, Perlmutter's out. His views on females were a bit archaic. Um, you know, the diversity thing. Now, 
the problem with the diversity is that companies like Marvel and Disney, Disney Marvel, the MCU, they don't use diversity the way it's supposed to be used a lot of the time. I can't say all the time because there has been things in the past that they did right uh, pre end game. Okay. Uh, one major asterisk was cat pan mediocre. <laughs> They ended up downgrading the seed. This is this is the thing to me, okay? So four years ago, you had so much faith in this movie that you had to put it between the two biggest movies that you're ever going to release. Marvel will never, never reach the heights of Infinity War or um, Endgame again. Never. It's not going to happen. I know you little stands are out there reeing and pissing yourselves when people say that and calling us incels and neckbeards and man babies. Well, my beard ain't nowhere on my neck. Uh, been married for almost 15 years and I have a kid, so not an incel, uh, not scared of women, and my neck beard. So that just leaves us with the fact that when people like me say that Marvel's never going to reach those heights again, we're correct. Look at Ant Man. How much money did Ant Man lose? 100, 150 million dollars. Uh, Black Panther barely, if all, turned a profit. Uh, couldn't even break a billion dollars because it was a shit movie. It was two hours and 41 minutes of garbage. Uh, Eternals, that lost money. Shang-Chi, that lost money. Black Widow, that lost money. Um, the MCU shows on Disney Plus were, for the most part, garbage, in my opinion. And a lot of people agree. Uh, She-Hulk was made, they spent millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars for an insecure showrunner named Jessica Gao to troll the fans, okay? This is the level of lunacy that goes into this, and people wonder why Disney Marvel is failing, why they're they're losing money, why, they're, why Disney has to let go of 7,000 employees. I don't take joy in... Let me rephrase this. I take joy in very few people losing their jobs, okay? Victoria Alonso is definitely one of those because she doesn't care about the source material. All she cares about is alphabet representation, uh, whammin' good, men bad. That's, that's what Victoria Alonso cares about. She did not care about the source material. She proved that when she said, well, there's maybe it's time for a new name for the X-Men. There's women in that team. Maybe they should be the X-People. There's always been women in the X-Men. Nobody ever gave a fuck that there was women in the X-Men. People love the X-Men, and especially the baddest bitch of them all, Storm, who was the leader of the team. And I'll tell you exactly how many people complained that the X-Men had a black female leader. Zero. That's the number of people who complained about Storm being the leader of the team as a black female mutant. Nobody cared. You know why? Because Storm was badass. Storm was drawn beautifully. She was a compelling character, very layered, had a lot going on in her life in the comic, and she was interesting. You wanted to see what she was going to do. You wanted to see how she was going to lead the team who was always diverse. There was always women on the team. So this whole argument that there was never any women before Jennifer Lawrence in 2012 is a joke. So you had to throw that in there. But let's get back to this article. Dan Buckley, president of Marvel Entertainment, will stay in place and report to Feige, president of Marvel Studios. Buckley previously reported to Feige and Perlmutter. Perlmutter sold Marvel to Disney in 2009 for $4 billion, having previously steered the company during the 90s, capitalizing on the comic book label superhero merchandising business. But he hasn't been an integral part of the feature film side since he warred with Feige over Doctor Strange's production. Perlmutter wanted to fire Feige. Disney boss Bob Iger said in a TV interview last month he couldn't let that happen. You know, and that's another thing, is like, would any of this have happened without Kevin Feige. And Kevin Feige played the long con with us. He definitely did. He played the long con, the long game, and that's what people like him do, okay? So that's that's still... Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big Kevin Feige fan. I, I respect some of what he's done, but the rest of it, it's really hard to get, out, get on his team. The returned CEO told CNBC in February... He'd initially promised Perlmutter he could continue to run Marvel after the acquisition. 
but not forever necessarily. And in 2015, he was intent on firing Kevin Feige. And I thought that was a mistake and stepped in to prevent that from happening. I think Kevin is an incredibly, incredibly talented executive that you know, the Marvel track record speaks for itself. And so I moved the movie making operation of Marvel out from under Ike and into the movie studio under Alan Horn with Feige reporting directly to Horn who retired from the company in 2021. No love was lost between Perlmutter and Iger. Let's put it this way. He was not happy about it, Iger said. Perlmutter, known for being thrifty and unafraid to speak the truth to power, hasn't steered Marvel TV shows since 2019 and has recently emerged as a key ally of Nelson Peltz, lobbying Disney directors and senior executives to meet with the activist investor who is seeking a board seat. When Disney declined, Pelt set the table for a major proxy battle and launched an all-out PR campaign challenging the company's performance and strategy. Pelt backed down abruptly in February when Iger unveiled a restructuring plan in conjunction with Disney's latest earnings. The annual meeting of shareholders is set for next week. That should be interesting, folks. The New York Times first broke the news about Perlmutter. Other executives laid off include Rob Steffens, co-president of Marvel Entertainment, John Turitzen, chief counsel for the label. Mr. Samir Naga, not going to work here anymore anyway. Say what you will about Ike. I, I don't know. You know, like I said, he hasn't steered Disney TV since 2019. So is this going to be a big deal? I really don't think so, honestly. They're cutting corners and cutting costs and, and axing executives and work, uh, you know, regular rank and file employees are going to feel this too as it is going to trickle down to them. And that's sad because, like I said, I, I don't wish for rank and file employees to not be able to provide for their families because that's simply inhumane. But some of these rank and file employees are the same ones that are championing um, extremist views and trying to push them on your children through the entertainment that they release. So there, therein lies the problem. Uh, like I said, not really siding with Ike Perlmutter in this, not really siding with Disney at all. It's just a microcosm of when bad meets evil. There you go, gang. There's our first video back. Uh, post Horror Hound, you know, the, the episode two review of Gotham Knights Nonwithstanding, which episode three will be out by Friday. Um, I'm not going to wait a week to get that out again. I haven't watched the episode yet. I will be watching that later on. We've got a lot more videos planned for you folks. Um, stay tuned and do all the YouTube things. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Etepo Kuyan from The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all these. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and we'll catch you on the next one. If you see Ike Perlmutter out by the street shaking a coffee can with change, throw in a couple pennies. Change? You got change? Oh, um, sure. 85, 95, one dollar. Thanks, Mr. And the fade away. I could do this all.